Hi, my name is Mariana Vallejo, and I will be doing the case presentation of Campbell versus A. Cuff Rose Music Incorporated. So some background information in the case is that this case is essentially about two songs and copyright. The first song, the original, is by Roy Orbison and William Dees. It was written in 1964, and it is called Oh, Pretty Woman. You might have heard the song in the soundtrack of the 1990 film with Julia Roberts called Pretty Woman. It was also used in different movies, and when it was first released, it was in the United States and UK charts for multiple weeks in the number one place. Now, because of the song's success, William Dees and Roy Orbison decided to give the rights to A Cuff Rose Music Incorporated. What this means is that they are in charge of everything that happens with the song, the copyright, the distribution, the copies, et cetera. Fast forward to 1989, and there is a Miami-based rap band called Two Live Crew that recorded a parody for the Oh Pretty Woman song and called it Pretty Woman. They went ahead and they asked permission of A Cuff Rose music. However, when they received the request, A Cuff Rose believed that the song was too vulgar and therefore denied the request. Now, Two Live Crew put the song on their album anyways and released the album in 1989. The songs are similar, especially in the beginning. However, as you move forward, the lyrics are very different and the rhythm changes a bit. I'm going to link the two songs with my presentation so that you can get a listen to them better than in this Zoom presentation. So about a year after the song was released, A Cuff Rose Music sued to live crew for copyright infringement. Now, this case went from the District Court to the Court of Appeals on the Sixth Circuit to the Supreme Court. And I'm going to tell you what happened in each court. So in the District Court, the ruling was in favor of Two Live Crew, stating that in the matter of copyright infringement, the rap band had used fair use to create a parody of the original. Basically, under the Copyright Act of 1976, if you use a copy of an original work for criticism, comment, law, uh, news reporting, teaching, scholarships, and research, then it does not infringe on the copyright. And this is the basis of Two Live Crew in the district court. Now, of course, A Cuff Rose was not content with this ruling and took the case to the Court of Appeals, where the ruling was reversed in favor of A Cuff Rose music. And it was claimed that in the parody, the heart of the original song had been taken and that this was enough to be more than fair use, but that they did state that the amount of the original song copied was within fair use. What does this mean? This means that the amount of the song taken from the original was okay, but because what they took was the heart of the song, then it wasn't okay. It wasn't fair use. They also argued that the market of the original song would be affected by the parody and therefore the ruling was in favor of A Tough Rose. Now with this, Campbell, the lead singer of Two Live Crew, decided that they were going to take this case to the Supreme Court. They were going to turn it in to see if the Supreme Court was willing to review the case. And luckily for them, the Supreme Court agreed to review the case and analyze the four factors that had to be considered per the Fair Use Act. These factors are the purpose of the song, the nature of the song, the amount of the original song used, and the effect of the song on the market. Now, if you notice, two of these factors were looked at in the Court of Appeals, but they were not looked at them as a whole. With the Supreme Court, they stated that all of the factors needed to be viewed, but they needed to also be seen as a whole to see how they came together. So the Supreme Court decided that the parody had brought for the first factor, that the parody had brought more attention to the existing song and was not a direct copy of the original and that the parody commented on how naive and romantic the original song was. Therefore, the purpose of the song was not in copyright infringement under the fair use. The nature of the song was argued because if the song had not, if the Two Live Crew song had not been a parody, then it would most definitely infringe the copyright. However, a parody needs to be similar enough to the original that the parody is recognized as part of the original and therefore, the nature of the parody was not copyright infringement under fair use. The next part is the amount of the original song. Both the Supreme and the Appeals Court agreed that the amount of the song taken was okay. Where they differed was 
the quality of the content that they took. So the Supreme Court said that because parodies need to be similar enough to the originals as stated in the second factor, then taking the heart or taking the portion that they did was within fair use. And this is where the Supreme Court believed that the Court of Appeals had made a mistake. Next and last factor was the effect of the song on the market. Because the two songs catered to completely different markets, then the effect of the parody would not hurt the market of the original song. And if you put all of these factors together, the Supreme Court ruled that the Two Live Crew song was in fact under the fair use of the original song. Now this ruling was unanimous and the judgment was given by Justice Souter and concurred by Justice Kennedy in different texts that you can see with the case. Now the importance of these cases are three points. The first is precedent. This is the first case to be ruled under the Supreme Court with the fair use and parodies. Now, what's important about it being under the Supreme Court is that it can be now precedent for all of the courts. If it had only been a, a case ruled in the district court, then only district courts could use this. But because the Supreme Court is the, law, the highest law of the land, then every court can use this case as a precedent. It also states that margins of the law are important. Although artists are able and should comment and create new works, they shouldn't take advantage of the original works and therefore margins to the fair use and to the copyrights should be marked so that artists won't slap any law after the fact and therefore be covered. And finally, the analysis of the process. So in the Court of Appeals, they only looked at two of the factors and they looked at them individually. However, in the Supreme Court, all of the factors under the FAIR Act were looked at and they were looked at them as a whole. And therefore, the Supreme Court was able to give a fair ruling on this case and gives an example of why it is important to view the whole process and to use all of the parts the law establishes and not just a part of the law. And with that, I say, Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.